Let me first introduce you to our CBAT sonar user interface. In the main display, here we have the sonar at the top, wedge display below, and the seabed as the green line in about seven meters of water right now. The two yellow lines that you see are our adaptive gates. I'll come back to adaptive gates a little bit later when we're talking about tracker. At the bottom, we have a couple of menus that expose all the various basic sonar settings to the operator so that the operator can change anything he wants. We can see range, pulse length, power and gain, but also absorption and spreading, swath coverage and steering angles. Everything is available. We'll come back to some of those features a little bit later. Over to the right, we have our normalized backscatter display, a waterfall display showing normalized backscatter. Normalized backscatter is a CBAT unique feature. It's a CBAT unique output where we have compensated for all changes to basic sonar settings in real time. I'll come back to normalized backscatter a little bit later in more details. On the right, you will find a number of slightly more advanced menus, recording settings and multi-detect settings, but we'll touch on some of those a little bit later. Let me show you some of the visualization features we have in the CBAT user interface. The seabed has traditionally been displayed as a green line, or in fact, a number of soundings. but it's difficult to identify features with certainty on the seabed based on just a green line. Some years ago, we introduced history display, which makes it much clearer to interpret the seabed. With the version two update for CBAT sonars, we have improved this feature by adding color by depth. This feature makes it more intuitive to see what is shallow and what is deep. You can see if there is a feature or if it's a featureless seabed. The color scale can be easily updated. You can see how we are now moving into bluish colors. But with a click on the color scale down here, it will automatically adapt to the average depth of this area. With the CBAT version 2 update, we introduced 1,024 beams per ping. The CBAT sonar has always been capable of 512 beams per ping, but we have increased that now and thereby doubled the sounding density from the same piece of hardware. Let me show you the difference between 512 beams and 1,024 beams. Right now, we're looking at 512 beams. But let's increase this to 1,024 beams. You can see the difference in sounding spacing. You can see the difference in sounding density from 512 to 1,024. Of course, you can also scale down if that is needed, for example, to 256 beams. This is sounding density with 256 beams. Let's talk about the tracker. Tracker is a CBAT autopilot that controls all basic sonar settings. No need for highly skilled operators to operate a CBAT sonar. You click one button and tracker takes care of everything. Let's see how it works. Let's first change the range setting to something incorrect. See how we are cutting off seabed on the port side here. Now, enabling tracker. In a matter of few seconds, we should see that tracker has adjusted range and potentially also power, gain, absorption and spreading to match the conditions that we have right now, both in terms of seabed intensity returns and range. 
Tracker, in combination with our adaptive gates, are a very powerful solution that brings you extremely clean CBAT data. Adaptive gates are those two yellow lines that you can see here, above and below the seabed. They follow the seabed. They are not depth gates, they are adaptive depth gates. You can see how they follow the seabed. If you pass on top of features, they will also follow that feature like a wreck, sand waves, key walls, etc. That means that you will not have any detections from potential noise up here in the water column, and you will not have any detection below the seabed from potential second returns. Let's take a look at tracker performance while we go from deep 15 meters up to very shallow. Notice that tracker is enabled up here. There are no manual changes. Tracker is in control of everything, and you can see over here how the range setting is slowly changing from 40 meters to 44 meters, 42 meters, 38 meters, and so on. Tracker is completely in control of our range setting. That also means that Tracker controls our ping rate. Tracker adjusting the range setting in very small steps means that we're always pinging at the optimal ping rate. Notice how the adaptive gates follow the slope up and you have no noise. You have no detections above the adaptive gates and you have no detection below. A dataset collected with adaptive gates and tracker enabled is typically a dataset that doesn't require any post-processing. Let's see how Tracker performs as we go from shallow out to the deep. Notice the adaptive gates. They follow the seabed very nicely. We're now turning the boat to the port and we will see the range changing from 27 meters, 26 meters and they will slowly start to increase in a few seconds. Tracker continues to use the optimal range setting for the depth in question. That means that we are always pinging with the ideal and optimal ping rate. That's important because ping rate means survey speed. So the more ideal ping rate, the higher the survey speed and the shorter the survey time. Normalized backscatter is a CBAT unique data output that provides true backscattering strength in real time. That means the data has already been compensated for changes to all basic sonar settings. You can see that Tracker is turned off now. Now, if the sonar settings would change, pulse length, for instance, that would normally have impacted the intensity return in the backscatter. But with CBAT normalized backscatter, we don't see any changes because it is true backscattering strength. Let's change the pulse length and you'll notice there are no changes to the backscatter intensity. Similarly, we can also change the source level power output. And again, as you can see, the backscatter is being compensated in real time. Normalized backscatter is designed for seabed classification. With normalized backscatter, the software manufacturers don't have to compensate for anything related to the sonar. That is already compensated for by us. 
Normalized backscatter and tracker autopilot go hand in hand. Tracker will adjust all your basic sonar settings to adapt to the environment. Under normal circumstances, that would mean that the backscatter response changes continuously as a result of the different sonar settings. However, thanks to normalized backscatter, the seabed backscatter response is corrected for the sonar settings in real time. This means that if backscatter is part of your deliverable, you can freely change the sonar setting or run tracker. Let's test this. Tracker is turned on now. All the settings are now controlled by Tracker, and you will notice there are no changes to the intensive return in our normalized backscatter. With the version 2.0 update for the CBAT sonars, we've introduced a very simple and intuitive way of recording raw sonar data. Over to the right, in our user interface, we have a recording tab. You simply need to select a path for the raw data and select the records that you want to record into the S7K file. Recording is started from the main display. The user interface can also replay an S7K file for us so we can record data and we can replay data in the same user interface. Replaying data in the CBAT user interface is also very simple. This is the newly recorded S7K file. Simply drag and drop the file into the user interface and the replay is now started. I click playback and I'm replaying my recorded S7K file. From the replayer, the user can take a snapshot or a screen recording. At the moment, the swath angle is set to 140 degrees but that could be up to 170 degrees. It can be controlled by a slider down here. Notice how Tracker automatically changes my range setting so the seabed is located in the optimal position. You can also change the swath coverage manually if you want to focus the beams into a specific area on a specific feature. For example, to look up a key wall or breakwater. Everything is fully configurable by the operator in real time. The CBAT beam former is extremely flexible. Right now we're generating 512 beams equally distantly spaced on the seabed but we don't know exactly what that sounding spacing is. We have a feature in the UI where we can set a given distance between soundings. Let's look at that now. Go to Advanced, enable constant seafloor spacing. It's now set to eight centimeters and you can see how we are now generating 606 soundings on the seabed, 630. That will obviously change with depth as you go deeper. We will generate more soundings up until the limit of 1024. You can change that spacing in real time and you can see that going down to 6 cm spacing we are generating 986 beams in real time. That means that with the CBAT you can always configure your sonar to exactly the survey requirements that you are facing. The CBAT user interface also has a service menu. In the service menu, we have what we call the Byte display, built-in test environment. This display gives you information about the hardware and the status of the hardware. For instance, we can look at the charger voltages. 
we can load the power amplifier voltages. So if you have a problem with your hardware of some sort, these green lines will go yellow or red depending on if it's a warning or an error. You can save the entire byte information into a small HTML file. That is very useful if you have a hardware problem and you need support from our service team. You can save a snapshot, save it to the hard drive and send that HTML file to our support team. Thank you for attending this virtual CBAT demonstration. Teledyne Marine. Everywhere you look.